Hi class, today we're going to talk about deceptive and honest signals. And not just uh, deceptive and honest signals in general, but deceptive and honest signals and how they influence predator-prey interactions. So uh, an example of that might be, just to give you some perspective, is an honest signal would be something I'm giving off right now. I'm in front of a green screen, right? Uh, so you know exactly what it is I'm doing. If it were a deceptive signal, right, I would maybe do this. And all of a sudden now I'm at the beach. Uh, I don't have my glasses on. And so it looks like I'm kicking back, having fun at the beach, but that's deceptive. Okay. So we're going to think about this idea of different kinds of deceptive uh, signals, what that means relative to an honest signal, uh, specifically with predator prey dynamics. So that's what we're about to do now. So get ready. Okay, so what are fingers and toes? Well, it turns out both fingers and toes are types of digits, right? And digits are a type of body part. So we can fit this in a nice, neat uh, hierarchical structure. So if we start out with what are different kinds of body parts, right, the overall thing here, and then we go, oh, there are digits, but there are also things like the head and the trunk and an arm and a leg and anything else you might want to uh, think about. But we could take digits and then break them down, right? We can have fingers, we can have toes, and we can break those down even further, right? We can say for fingers, you have both thumbs and index fingers, or for thinking about toes, you could have both big toes and little toes. So in this case, this gives us a framework to think about different kinds of body parts, right? And there's those sayings like, hey, uh, all um, thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs, right? It kind of comes from this basic hierarchical structure. And thinking this way is going to be really important as we consider uh, coloration and morphology and thinking about deceptive and honest signals because there are a lot of different kinds of terms and a lot of different kinds of processes and we tend to confuse them and sometimes we actually use them, uh, use those terms incorrectly. And so hopefully the framework that we'll go over uh, provides something reasonable for you to think about as we go about and think about these particular concepts. Okay, so let's review the hierarchy of the different kinds of signals that we're going to look at. And to begin with, we can see that we have both deceptive and honest signals, right? And then we can follow, let's say, deceptive signals down, and what do we see? Signals that either change the perception of that particular organism, right? Or it is a signal that actually causes that individual to avoid being detected altogether. So it avoids perception. Right? So if we focus a little bit more on just changing perception, we have two types that we'll talk about, masquerading and Batesian mimicry. And we'll get into the details of those uh, in just a moment. Avoiding perception is pretty straightforward. That's just being camouflage, okay? So all of those are different kinds of deceptive signals. What about honest signals? Well, with honest signals, we have morphological or behavioral features that are lumped together as one kind of thing and then those that we consider to be aposematic coloration because it's been such a widely studied area so we put that there and if we go down under uh, aposematic coloration we actually see that uh, aposematic coloration can happen within just a single species right so it's brightly colored and it's warning and we'll get to that uh, in a little bit uh, or you can have a whole bunch of species all looking the same and all being brightly colored uh, and we call that Mullerian mimicry and we'll talk about the details of that uh, as well. So now that we have a framework in place, let's consider each one separately. So here's the first one. So the question is, what am I now? Right? Is this deceptive? Is this honest? Right? Am I trying to be cryptic? Or am I masquerading as something else? What do you think? So I was actually masquerading as the poop emoji, if you couldn't tell. So in that case, it was a deceptive signal, but I wasn't trying to avoid being perceived. I actually wanted to be perceived, 
but I wanted to give off a signal that caused you to misidentify me. So instead of me being a yummy treat that you might eat, you go, oh, look at that, that's poop, and you don't eat, right? That's the whole point uh, behind that. And an example in, the, uh, in, in insects that we're gonna see is here, right? You see this mantid, uh, it actually looks like a leaf or part of the flower. In those cases, it's likely that it's not trying to completely hide being detected. It's actually trying to be perceived, right? But just misidentified as being part of that particular flower. What about now? What am I doing? Can you see me now? Am I masquerading as something else? Am I cryptic? Am I standing out? What's happening now? Okay, so did you figure out what I was trying to do there? Right, I was just trying to be cryptic. And in this case, uh, being cryptic is a deceptive signal, right? It is a deceptive signal. But it's not that I'm trying to change your perception. I'm actually trying to make it to where you don't perceive me at all, right? I'm trying to hide from being perceived. And this is a really common thing uh, within insects in nature. Uh, and it turns out probably the most common are insects being green or brown more generically. They're just blending into the background. They're not necessarily trying to look like anything. They're just trying to blend away. Uh, and we can also see it in examples like this white uh, butterfly on a white flower. It's not trying to necessarily look like the flower. Uh, it's just trying to blend in with the background. Rawr! Rawr, rawr, rawr! Rawr, rawr, rawr! 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 So, did you get what the rawr was? Right, I was trying to be a tiger, right? A deadly tiger, but I'm not really a tiger, right? So it's a deceptive signal, right? It is a deceptive signal. And I'm trying to change your perception. I'm trying to make you think that I'm a tiger, even though I'm not. And this is called Batesian mimicry, right? When a non-dangerous thing mimics a dangerous thing, that's Batesian mimicry. And it's really common in nature. And it turns out that uh, a really good example would be something like a hoverfly which is mimicking a bee or a yellow jacket uh, to make you think, hey, I'm dangerous, don't mess with me, right? Nice and bright yellow and black, but in actuality, it's just a fly. Okay, don't mess with me or I will throw this all over you. It's dangerous. So in that case, it was really obvious, right? So I was trying to be dangerous. I was telling you I was dangerous. I gave you a uh, a warning coloration, right? The bright orange sticker that said, hey, I'm dangerous. I'm telling you I'm dangerous. This is a completely honest signal, right? I'm trying to warn you. And brightly colored uh, advertisements or warnings uh, associated with being dangerous, these honest signals, is called aposematic coloration. And aposematic coloration is really common uh, within insects. And so, there are examples like the stink bug here, right? It's nice and bright red. It's telling you, I taste terrible. If you eat me, you're gonna get sick. Or the monarch, monarch butterfly. It is a really common example. Uh, the monarch butterfly is a really common example. And it's bright coloration it says, don't eat me, uh, because it does taste really, really, really bad. And then finally, we've kind of mentioned this one before. Uh, this is actually a yellow jacket. It's brightly colored, it's yellow and black. It says, don't mess with me. I'll sting you, okay? So all of these are honest signals. They're trying to warn predators away from trying to eat them, right? It's called aposematic coloration. Now, sometimes this aposematic coloration isn't limited to just a single species, right? Sometimes there may be two or three or dozens or maybe even hundreds of species, right, in a given area that all end up converging and looking like the same sort of thing. They're all dangerous, they all taste bad, something about them is dangerous. And that convergent evolution onto a single sort of pattern makes it easier for predators, right, to identify which ones are dangerous and which ones aren't. But it also helps out those particular species that look that way because now they're not being eaten as often. 
And so this is called Mullerian mimicry, right? We talked about Batesian mimicry before. This is Mullerian mimicry, right? When dangerous prey items end up looking alike. What are you doing here? Leave here before you are destroyed. Now, finally, when we think about honest signals, there are things like size and aggressiveness that can come into play. And size is sort of the most obvious, right? Uh, a big thing is gonna pre be perceived as being much more uh, dangerous than a small thing, uh, given the relative size range for any particular species. So that is a honest signal, right? And we can think about uh, even between species, you have a big bird, right, trying to potentially eat a smaller insect, that smaller insect sees that particular bird and goes, that's a big thing, that could eat me, that's dangerous, that is an honest signal, okay? Take three, set that down. How's my hair? Is it all right? A little messed up. It's hot in here today. Glasses. Can't see. Okay, that's not right. Okay, ready? Let's go.